traditional surgery for gastroesophageal reflux disease is a Nissen fundoplication. This has been around since the mid-1950s, uh, introduced by Dr. Rudolf Nissen. And while it was performed for many years as an open procedure requiring an incision between the, uh, the uh, belly button and the chest bone, we now perform this laparoscopically. And really, this is the uh, traditional procedure of choice, the gold standard by which most other surgical treatments are, uh, are evaluated. I should say that regardless of what kind of surgical treatment a patient has, it's important to keep in mind the relationship between reflux and a hiatal hernia. Because not every patient is going to have a hiatal hernia, but whatever surgical treatment they have, the hiatal hernia will be dealt with as part of their surgical treatment. There are some patients who are going to have surgery just because their hiatal hernia is so large. But for most of the patients who come in with complaints of, of uh, unrelieved reflux or heartburn, if they have a hiatal hernia, it will get repaired no matter what we do. So with Nissen fundoplication, we would first take care of the hiatal hernia, make sure that the stomach is back in its normal position. And then because the, the real problem in reflux disease is that the lower valve in the esophagus is, is incompetent, it cannot stand up against normal pressures within the stomach, we're able to take the upper portion of the stomach or the fundus and we are able to wrap it or plicate it around the esophagus. And that's where the, the, the name fundoplication comes from. We take a part of the stomach, wrap it around the esophagus that's right next to it and suture that in place. What that does is it creates a bit of a, a fleshy nipple valve arrangement inside the stomach. There's no flap valve or anything like that inside the stomach as people are prone to imagine. But what this process does is it creates a fleshy one-way valve, which when it's constructed properly, allows the patient to swallow normally. And once the uh, contents are in the stomach, that valve resists the regurgitation of stomach contents. Fundoplication is a uh, very effective surgical treatment. It's been around for decades. There have been thousands of them performed and it's been very well studied. So we know very well what the side effects uh, might be related to it and its effectiveness. One of the major criticisms of a fundoplication is that it can be overly effective. In other words, it can prevent a patient from bringing gastric contents up when they want to. And by that I mean being able to belch air up when they want to, or under other circumstances, being able to vomit. Although the operation is known to allow some patients to vomit, and it may be as high as 20 or 30 percent, most patients who have a fundoplication should not expect, certainly shouldn't expect that they will vomit normally. What that means is if they were to become ill, uh, they might have dry heaves, but nothing would come up. That seems like a pretty daunting set of symptoms to some people to not be able to vomit. Practically speaking, in a patient who has very severe reflux disease and we are able to control their reflux with a fundoplication, uh, most patients are very, very gratified with that. and It's an excellent operation. In the case that they have nausea, say from a flu bug or something like that, we make sure they have medications to suppress uh, the tendency to try and have dry heaves. The irony of it is that the better the operation that works, probably the less likely the patient is to successfully vomit, and it is the retching activity that can lead to deterioration of the operation itself over time. So if there's an Achilles heel to Nissen fundoplication, it's that it can, uh, it can deteriorate in effectiveness over time. Knowing that, however, studies show that probably somewhere between 75 and 85 percent of patients have effective management of their reflux at 10 years with a fundoplication. We've made some adaptations that we think make the surgery particularly resistant to forces that might cause it to deteriorate. We reinforce our fundoplications and use other techniques that we think are going to stand up the, the test of time better than say 20 years ago. So we've made every attempt to improve the surgery uh, that I learned in training and give the patient the maximal benefit. Nissen fundoplication is the gold standard operation by which most other surgical procedures for reflux disease are judged. Nissen fundoplication was named after Dr. Nissen and introduced in the mid-1950s, so it's been performed for decades. We have thousands of people who have had the procedure and we have a good idea of what the risks 
and the long-term uh, benefits and downfalls of the procedure are. And in our experience, it's the one we have the most experience with also. We've had hundreds of Nissen patients. The Nissen fundiplication relies on the idea of building a supportive hug around the lower part of the esophagus by using a part of the stomach that lies right next to the esophagus. So we take the fundus of the stomach and we wrap it around the esophagus or plicate it around the esophagus. So we do a fundoplication and that's where the name comes from. It supports the area that tends to pull open and allow reflux, but it also creates a fleshy sort of a one-way valve or a nipple valve inside the stomach so that when the patient swallows, effective swallowing force will push food into the stomach, but that fundoplication will prevent regurgitation. Sometimes the fundoplication's effectiveness is actually its downfall, and patients may not be able to belch as freely as they once could. That can lead to bloating symptoms. Patients probably are not going to vomit normally. If they became ill and tried to vomit, they would have dry heaves. And in fact, in some cases, repetitive attempts to vomit can lead to pulling sutures out and causing the operation itself to fail. It's a very effective procedure but that inability to belch or vomit is, is really one of the things that causes patients great concern. I would have to say that that risk of an operation, so to speak, has to be balanced by the benefit. So if we had a patient who, for instance, had to sleep upright in a recliner because their reflux disease was horrible, or they were having recurrent episodes of pneumonia because they were aspirating their gastric contents, then the concern over an occasional episode of nausea that had to be treated with medication doesn't seem very important anymore. So we have, we have hundreds of very satisfied Nissen fundoplication patients. In fact, I'm not aware of any that would not have repeated the procedure under the same circumstances, but it does require careful technical attention to detail. The operation has to be done with, uh, in a meticulous fashion and the patients have to be selected appropriately with a careful evaluation ahead of time. The Nissen fundoplication has been around a long time and we know that the survival or the, the efficacy of the operation 10 years after it's been performed is still quite good. The numbers in our studies vary based on operations that were done 10 years ago and in fact we think we do a better operation now than was done 10 years ago. But if you look at those patients who were done 10 years ago in the surgical literature, still 75 to 85 or 90 percent of those patients have effective control of their reflux disease. Some of them might be taking medication in addition to their operation. And in some cases, one has to look at that, uh, say, as you would a cardiac bypass. A patient that has a heart bypass for heart disease doesn't expect to throw all their medication away. They will still take heart medications along with what was done to control the problem. In some sense, uh, an operation might be paired with medication effectively and the patient would have effective control where they didn't used to. So although that's certainly not our ideal, operations are not, it's not black and white. A operation Um, I don't want to do any of that. Um, <coughs> so to the part where we started talking about uh, it's been around a long time and we know what the long-term outcomes are. We're going to cut from there and I'm going to okay, yeah. redo that. Okay. Okay. Right. <coughs> Let me make a Fundoplication has been around for a long time, so we're very experienced in the long time, long term outcomes of fundoplication. <clears throat> Take again. Fundoplication has been around for a long time, so we're very experienced in what to expect. Fundoplication is very effective, such that at 10 years we expect there should be better than 75 and hopefully closer to 90% control of reflux disease. The downsides of the operation really have to do with how well it works. In fact, it sometimes works too well. The fundoplication might prevent reflux, of course, we expect it to, but it might prevent normal activities that would allow one to empty the stomach, meaning can we belch after we eat or could we vomit if we became ill? And those two things, the, the vomiting in particular, may not be normal after fundoplication. 
We expect most of our patients to be able to belch adequately and not suffer from conditions of bloating or, or discomfort after meals. But in terms of vomiting, we expect that most patients probably would not empty their stomach normally and we discourage them from trying. We give them nausea medicine, so if they think they're going to have dry heaves, for instance, they can take the medication and avoid the retching activity that places a lot of stress on their, on their surgery and can lead to uh, it failing eventually. That inability to vomit is one of the things that has led to a search for an operation that somehow is a compromise, and we think that's where some of the newer techniques may give us an a, uh, advantage uh, in managing reflux patients long term.